Yeah, real teachers. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think before Amrish comes in, I'll just quick because very less people in now. So we were just discussing about uh, you know some um, amazing I um, you know development for Evolve. For those of you who are keen to know a little bit about Evolve, because we do not talk much about it. Um, you know, <clears throat> kind of keeping it separate to Gajira, right? So, uh, Evolve is going to be like a big, let's say, IP and trade and um, trade place, IP play, and also like partnership place, like you know, some big, big partnerships. Um, you know, for brands from Web two and stuff, because we want to segregate that from PG, because you know, we were tired of you know posting some major announcements, um, you know, linking with PG, but PG was built on a different way, as in like it's almost still seen as an alpha group. Uh, as a brand and all those things but um if it, it doesn't you know even if we announce tomorrow that we have got funding from you know the richest guy in the world i don't think it's going to make any difference to pg side because pg is purely as i said like you know it's built in a different way so evolve is um as it's a piece and it's not you know built as on as an alpha group or anything like that um so which is where you know it gives us the opportunity to use our connections which is again going to benefit pg holders as well because pg is pretty much you know uh, where we started everything from um but i've always to just segregate these things like you know say um um a uh, uh, a partnership with hilton for instance um it's it's it just gets lost right but it's a big deal like you know we had to struggle so much to get something like that from web 2 and the web 3 guys are like ah fuck it you know are nice and then they like and they forget about it and it's forgotten right forever um you know till date we have got all these irl utilities um say across few countries uh, but still it gets lost and uh, it's not being let's say used or it's useful for everybody right how do we solve this how do we solve this issue right like you know how do you solve this like uh, let's say someone from australia you do not get access to say bali you know what the discount what we have got in bali for instance or even like say uh, a partnership with a a brand like you know like a web2 brand like you know it can be a clothing brand or whatever and you're like yeah i don't like this brand i don't want to buy it just because um, you know chukajira has got partnership or um, with them right how do we solve this right um this is going to be uh, where i think it's going to be revolutionary what we are going to do with um, uh, evolve um you know where it's completely going to be uh, tradable every single benefit right is probably if you win or you get it and you have access uh, tradable in the secondary market like you know just an example is say um, you know we had a call with someone just uh, an hour back um, they're well they're pretty much like a well connected with emirates and we're going to help them and there's some benefits and stuff coming up right so instead of offering like um hey guys you get benefits for flying emirates or something right being a gajira holder which is again going to get lost people are not going to see it or they're not the crowd here is different um let's say we allow this uh, as an access you know where it's also a small um, complaint from the gen 2 holders that uh, let's say genesis are getting a lot more uh, uh, benefits than gen 2s because uh even with fusion xyz i don't know if it was uh, i don't know how many of you was were in the ama they have a thousand supply and if you go and check fusion xyz they pretty i think they're pretty gaining a pretty decent uh, uh traction i would say um in the in twitter and stuff there's pretty decent reactions like you know even even for just announcement like you know look at this for instance uh we made this they made this announcement and there was like 700 likes or something and it's not a whitelist giveaway or anything right uh <clears throat> Uh, fusion is pretty much is 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 solving a lot of um, um you know missing elements in the space and guess what apart from being a thousand pass right all the genesis holders are going to get the benefits of the thousand passes right so 333 genesis um is pretty much like almost like thousand supply fusion plus extended 333 which is almost like you do not have to hold a fusion xyz pass and just by being a genesis holder you're going to get like you know full access to this pass like you know so these are the things we have been building but um let's say for gen 2s right you're going to be like ah oh, shit man like you know how do i get this benefit and you know why do genesis always get it's because genesis being a low supply it's very easy to negotiate um so and gen 2s will get like a tier 2 benefit kind of thing where like you know they won't get access to everything but few things But let's be honest like you know not everyone's going to use that right so what is the point of uh, losing out on like you know trying to get like you know 3000 average benefits right 
um, 3000 average benefits for Gen 2, then like, you know, try and get like 300 amazing benefits for Gen 2, but spread across uh, to the Gen 2 holders, where if you don't want to use it, you could obviously sell it or sell it at a discount or even give it to your friend or whatever, right? This is what we're going to try and test and uh, prove with Evolve as a trait. You know, anything and everything will be dropped as a trait, trait, right? So you mint a trait, which could be a Emirates trait, or it could be a fusion trait, or it could be whatever trait um, that you can either wear it in your, uh, in your PFP and it changes the metadata, or you could just sell it in the secondary, right? Um, for instance, we don't want to, we don't want to build Evolve as a whitelist giveaway uh, brand. You know, it's kind of super annoying and, uh, it's really hard to maintain and stuff like that, right? We do not want to build Evolve that way. And we are not going to, we are going to be very, very strict with whom we partner with um, and stuff like, you know, even for whitelist and stuff. <clears throat> and let's say we get like, say, 100 meme land spots, for instance, for Evolve. It will be allowed as a trait, all right? It won't be, uh, you won't be participating in raffles, okay? You'll be uh, minting traits to upgrade your uh, uh, Evolve um, you know, PFP, but this is where the twist is. We let's say we partner with Meme Land, Evolve, and Yin Yang, right? Because they're only they're the only three major ones for that month, for instance. And we get hundred spots each for Evolve, for instance. It'll allow you to mint five hundred trades with Jira tokens, which is where the link between the Evolve and PG will always be there. Evolve will not be earning Jira tokens, right? But Instead of allowing them to mint more trades with 0.01 ETH or 0. Point whatever ETH, right? Because trades are again like, you know, separate NFTs. It's going to be separate NFTs, right? You could be minting like, there'll be like a 500 mint, gas-free, right? Gas-free Jira mint uh, using Jira. And you pretty much can win, um, let's say, uh, meme, land, meme land trait, which you can either wear it in your, with your Evolve uh, PFP, or you pretty much can sell it or transfer or give it to anybody and a snapshot would be taken you burn the evolve trait uh, evolve meme land trait and you claim your meme land whitelist spot so this will only be um, available for uh, you know uh, hyped whitelists and uh, stuff like that just gamifying it in a different way so i i mean like this is purely you know uh, we want we want to you know kind of have this um, uh, fun element and the gamification side of things but at the same time not move away from the core uh, value what Evolve's going to bring. So which is like, you know, IP and partnerships and, you know, fashion and lifestyle brand and products, lifestyle products, because we are, as you may know, we always work towards services and products. Um, so um, this is just like a, like a, one of the, um, um, you know, kind of like the differences, like, you know, how, if for anyone who's confused, how it's going to work is basically, as I said, like, you know, Evolve would be requiring Jira tokens, uh, if they want to, you know, get more value out of it. And at the same time, we do not want to go through these raffles and all those kind of uh, stuff and have collab managers and stuff. So Gojira's co collab managers get whitelist spots for Evolve as well. And we only will collab or partner with hyped and, um, you know, some valuable uh, partnerships, right? We do not want to just, you know, partner with, because as I said, like Gojira has been grown or known as a whitelist hub, so we don't want to change that, even like projects like Gojira and projects of Llama. But Evolve is going to change in the sense like you, we do not have to keep launching NFTs. No one has to keep launching NFTs anymore. This will give up a way we partner with, uh, let's say, New Balance. We're going to launch New Balance traits. You have two options. Wear the New Balance shirt um, and upgrade your Evolve NFT, right? Or you burn the New Balance trait and claim your uh, New Balance shirt digital, right? Um, which is like, you know, you don't, the transfer of value is what's missing in the space. You're getting value, which you're not even using. Let's say Jira tools. Okay. Let's say Jira tools, right? Not everyone's going to use it, right? You know, it's going to come out, you know, by as, as, as promised by quarter three, which is like, you know, another less than 20 days. And also the whitelist mark, I mean, like the gasless marketplace and stuff. And let's say you don't want to use the Jira tools. How do you capitalize on it? Right? Imagine the trait in your Gojira, right? For instance, it, the trait is your tool. And you can just split your NFT and remove that, that particular trait and sell it to an outsider who doesn't have a Gojira but wants the tools. You're making money there. All right. So, um, which is, a, we are making you the customers. 
uh, who could like you know i mean actually almost like a retailer right you're making we are making you like a retailer for any benefit you get imagine you can split it and if you don't want to use it you can sell it or if you want to use it you can keep it in your nft but it's going to search for that trait right that particular trait for taxes you know it's not going to search for your gen 2 for the tools but it's going to search for the a jira tool trait which will be add drop let's say for all the 3000 um gen 2 holders but if the trait is missing in your gen 2 you cannot access it so you can sell that particular trait to uh, public by you're making um you know just some say like you know income or something like that which can be add dropped once every 3 months or whatever and stuff like that right so this is i don't want to leak too much i think but this is the concept and the idea behind evolve and if it's successful Uh, which i think it will be because you know i don't see um, uh, this is just one of the benef- i mean like the main utility and use cases um, for evolve um, which is i think it can create a new entire new meta and gamification and the way white lists and stuff are distributed um, not only that and even for other web2 projects to come in and feel a taste of the web3 without having to launch their own collection like mclaren didn't have to come and launch a new collection they can just launch a trade with us you know with uh, with with uh, you know like a jira sorry evolve uh, mclaren trade and uh, just sense the pulse of the market like you know they see how um, it's being received um, you know um, it can be a mclaren cap or mclaren shirt that could be added and uh, you know into evolve and you get some benefit whatever they're planning for for their nfts it would be a taste because they're only launching 100 to 200 trades so the trade will still maintain its rarity at the same time the com- um, the, the web2 brands that we partner with um, you know could see what's happening and similar thing to to hilton like you know or or ritz carlton or wherever we got the hotel vouchers or the discounts um these could be trades now so you could pretty much like sell them if you don't want to use like you know i've got this uh, feedback like you know that hey man like you know we have these things but i can't travel i don't have the time i don't have the money what am i going to do with these benefits i'm just not using it but now you can pretty much sell those benefits whatever benefit that's coming in it's coming in as a trade drop it either add it because you like the design you like the artwork you like the brand that you want to keep your because pfps are you know still your brand identity right so you want to upgrade your brand to have like a you know this you know we partner like you know with the the brand we are partnering with um or you could just burn it to claim the thing or sell it in the secondary and you make the money so uh, <clears throat> so evolve is also like you know for whatever uh wait which one is this Mm. yeah so essentially um it's whatever experience and whatever we learned and whatever we have seen from all these projects um from the last one and a half years being in the space um i think <clears throat> it's going to be uh, we are we are learning from all the mistakes right you know what i have made what lama has made what anyone's made um we are still in a very good position like you know let's not forget that like you know we are like pg as such is still like you know we are getting like so many um you know collab requests just because we are not updating every day or i'm not um, you know in the, in the vc every day um you know although we are having ams every day i think i hope uh, you know a lot of you would appreciate that um you know the different team members uh, but almost every day we are we are um, you know trying to move away from this we are really tired of these nft mints guys like i'll be honest right we i think most of you would be as well it's really tiring like you know there's just some random crap projects keeps coming every day and it almost like the space is dying um and i think uh, you know for we are one of those uh, few respected brands still in the space right and uh, we have got our strength as is, is our ideas and the smart team that we have got our weakness was the funds i think most of you would also know that our weakness was the funding and um, you know not uh, you know having like like you know although we expected this bear market and stuff you know we didn't let's say like you know we could have um, you know all, all all of those things were there funding was our weakness for most of the time till like you know uh, till the recent like you know jira was side of things as i said like i think in the last town halls as well like now we are really comfortable for the next you know a uh, year and a half to two right we do not have to complain about the funds that's why i said like you know i quit my job after the singapore event we finished it in uh, july we back in august from august first is where i want you guys to treat us as an actual full case full development right like from august is where i want all of you as holders to start observing what we are going to do i right? till then 
most of you would know as well like you know we have been doing this part time especially myself personally um and the funding was low so we were understaffed and stuff so from august 1st um i really appreciate if um, any of the holders start seeing what we are doing from august 1st which is obviously the change in marketing style um change in our you know having everyday ams looking into suggestions for improvements pushing out the products within like you know the specified periods which we'll prove and we'll show it within this month uh, before the quarter 3 ends the three main targets um which is why we i think you know uh, it's almost like a um, august one is our we're calling it our almost like our our uh, like another starting point uh, clearing out all our learning from all our mistakes and stuff but the good thing let's not forget right is that we didn't burn our funds right even till the period from last year till um august of this year we didn't burn the funds maybe we didn't uh, b- burn our funds by delivering some product which was irrelevant right uh, you you guys are part of multiple other projects right august this year yes august this year is when like essentially we started like you know in, as a full time everybody every staff right um so um essentially that is where that is when we are pretty much like you know started as as a as a full full on team and for me also coming fully on board and uh, now we are kicking out these three products before end of september like you know um which is um, i think almost like you know it's not i don't want it to be seen as three products from march of gen 2 uh, from gen 2's launch but rather three products from august 1 because that's when our funds came in um so yeah that's that's pretty much the um you know the the major change that like you know like the the change in um, the way that we're going to uh, be running pg um kicking out projects and relevant projects right and sorry i was also telling about how um how uh, you being part of other communities and other projects um how many products have they released and how many products are you actually using right you're looking at it and be like oh this project has delivered everything they promised okay fine but how many products are you actually using um you know the products that how many products you're actually using is what's important like i i want to i want some of you guys to just type in the pg ama chat like what are the products in web3 space that you're actually using right apart from whitelist marketplaces uh, it, it doesn't have to be just okay tools perfect um sniping tools yep that's again tools anything else that you're using like you know as in like noti.finance what's that for like what is the um, use case wallet trackers that's fine what's noti.finance like is it again uh, basically tools right basically tools uh, but why is something like you know why why do brands like doodles or um, you know um, let's say even moonbirds like you know they don't offer tools or um i think pretty much i think people are using okay whitelist ping i think that we i think we have a e- better solution for that tools again we are coming up with that i mean it's pretty much in a week or so um i think tools is the only utility i think a lot of you would use but majority right 80% don't have the time you guys are professionals and you don't have time you want to be pretty much like buy a product and like project and stuff and you pretty much want to come once in a while um and you know you want to go back but 80% of you probably are not going to use any of these features that people have been launching you know that's the truth right you know this noti.finance or whatever tools if i if i run a pretty much uh, t-shirt merch okay all right merch uh, uh some of you yes they they value merch a lot perfect so from what i see now tools merch um again why it's coming back to whitelist tracking and all those things which is again going back to whitelist marketplaces and stuff so let's say uh whitelist meta is done right um and uh, stuff like that what would you use if there's no whitelist meta there's pretty much t- tools are also like pretty much um if whitelist meta is dead that means it's a super bear market that means tools are also going to become useless uh, am i right with that assumption right so um yeah so pretty much i think the impo- the, the point what i'm trying to make right i don't want to go too much into this because uh, i i've learned that i think i'm overthinking a lot for a lot of people and they kind of like you know it's, it's kind of hard for people to exactly understand <laughs> what you know what pg is doing so the i the clear point is that we do not you know the all the products that keep um uh, compete com- like you know uh, being released by multiple other utility based projects are not being used by majority of the holders okay this is a very 
um, you know known or well known um, fact right that is why a lot of partnerships are easy to be made because every partnership you go they're like ah you have 3000 supply that means maybe 10% or 15% are going to use this uh, thing so to make it attractive will be like ah everyone's getting the uh, utility but we know only 10% or 15% are going to use but then let's be honest right if you're let's say we give you the best of the tools okay we give you the best of the whitelist pings best of the whitelist tracker um all the tools that's existing in the market right let's take all the tools that's existing in the market let's take all the sniping stuff and let's also take merch okay these three are what i've getting here right like you know what what are the features that i've been get i mean like the let's say the benefits um you know that um, you're getting here and let's also say eth trading tool right like that's again tools uh, you know like copy trading right so um if considering that um, everything what you, it's it's revolving around these tools and these kind of things would you ever pay an nft like 50 eth or 60 eth to get this just access for these tools right like we give you the let's say we give or another project gives you the best of the tools would anybody be um, you know willing to move or get this 50 or 60 eth nft just to get access to these tools and and the guys who would be willing to pay 50 eth wouldn't have the time to use these tools because why because they are like some rich big shots they don't have time to use these tools i've never used tools in my life just i'm not saying that i'm a big shot and stuff but i don't have the time to use the tools right so for me why would i want to be in a project because i'm getting uh, tools with that and let's say all these tools are going to pump the floor to say 5 eth 6 eth and stuff maybe that's where it stands um what would be the point after that like you know what what is the growth what's going to trigger the growth you know this is what uh, what's happened with a lot of projects where they burnt their funds okay I'm, I'm, all i wanted to bring up to this point was the projects burnt their funds by giving up these building these tools and burning out 70 80% of their funds they didn't drug they just dev- delivered a product that's no more um let's say um you know re- relevant right no more relevant um so what happens it doesn't it's not going to be used or it's not going to be um you know it's it's kind of the money is burned the tool is there but then that's it the growth kind of stops they're forced to make more mints right so um one thing we didn't do is obviously we didn't burn the funds but from august uh, what we are launching this this gasless marketplace is going to be not just for whitelist right that's whitelist is probably i'm not exaggerating when i say the whitelist utility for the uh, for the gasless marketplace is going to be like say 1% in the long term right i'm not exaggerating when i say that because uh, the whitelist market it's not even going to be called a whitelist marketplace for for for, for the first thing right so what we are launching in quarter 3 the gasless uh, jira marketplace it's going to be called something else it's not even going to be like a whitelist marketplace but uh, it's going to open up the doors to so much of uh, opportunities because as i said like you know it's almost like a casino um digital system where you come in and deposit jira tokens and then in the back end you can do like crazy number of things and withdraw the jira tokens um, you know whenever you're done chance to win more jiras chance to you know do a lot more things chance to launch your own product launch your own services whatever like you know launch your you know there's going to be like you know you want to have your own profile and stuff so multiple different versions of the you know as the market uh, as the jira um gasless marketplace right when it's coming out the multiple different versions there's going to be multiple updates that will be rolled out so um yeah i mean like for us basically that's one way that we are moving and the second way is uh you know ac- giving access and working um you know like like as i said like you know how many of you would be happy or um you know keen to in- invest in like say some exclusive seed round opportunities right um like you know seed round opportunities for um let's say some new product that's coming out like you know i'm i'm just going to give some profile right there's there's one major vc which is funded uh solana at the start which is funded um uh, binance which is funded ftx exchange which is funded uh, you know few other not just exchanges and coins but other web3 web uh, technology which is successful if they if tomorrow um they are going to um uh, you know launch or uh, you know let's say they're going to be a fundraiser for another product okay just think of this right um they are going to fund another web 2 or a web 3 product and they have like a tremendous record and it's impossible for public to reach into the seed round right seed phase 
right? Because it's only like contact, like, you know, they pretty much, you can only contact, uh, they, they only contact like, you know, um, high level investors or people with connections, right? Imagine if you can invest into that, right? Imagine if you can in invest into the seed seed round. It's not seed round, it's seed seed round, right? Seed round is basically uh, where a product raises funds for its development. Like Binance launched its seed round. They evaluate themselves at say $5 million or $10 million and they sell like 5% of the equity to raise some funds. So imagine if you had participated in that and you put in just like say $100 or $500 or $1,000, Right now, that's worth almost like $100 million. All right. So um, this is, I'm not saying everything is going to be successful, right? Obviously, every seed round is not going to be successful. But as a minimum, when you get into the early investor equity round, as a minimum, it's a minimum like I've never seen something do under like 3 or a 4x, like a decent uh, one, like as a minimum. And as a maximum, it's done like, you know, crazy numbers. Like, you know, if you had, in, as I said, if you had invested in Binance or FTX during its, uh, or Solana during its, um, you know, um, early stages or equity round, uh, it's it's crazy, right? This is the opportunity we want to bring in. We as PG are investing in a project now. Like, you know, so in um, in, a, um, in a week, we'll be announcing which project. So uh, we, pro we were thinking of opening it up to the holders, uh, for a few of the holders to participate. But I think the time is pretty short for this one. But, um, you know, it involves a little bit of KYC and stuff. But you cannot be getting this accessibility uh, by yourself. Like, it's almost impossible until you have a VC or you are a VC or you're connected with them. So they're raising $8 million uh, for a $50 million valuation. And they're giving to us, um, you know, the, uh, they're allowing us to participate in the equity round, right? And within like six months, when they launch their token round and seed A and seed B, by itself is automatically going to be a minimum like a five or a six x right like when the tokens and stuff drop even if it's the shittiest of the shittiest ones that's like the minimum i think few of you would be seen i uh, would have participated in seed rounds and stuff so bringing this opportunity to holders is also uh prime importance for us so allowing you guys to um you know participate in like uh, opportunities like these like you know we have been getting a uh, few of these opportunities i don't know how many of you know kicks k-i-c-k-z so kicks is like a uh, major like you know sneaker reseller and stuff like you know connected with nike and stuff so they are having a seed round and uh, they don't they didn't you can't reach out to them you cannot get opportunities like this but um essentially we have got an opportunity to invest in kicks meta as well so you know the i'm just like you know giving some examples and um and the direction what we are taking so as a holder now you're probably going to be looking at this is just one of the you know aspects of pg right um you're going to be like uh how do i get access to these like you know there's 500 people that that have invested and let's say that's 10x to 50x to whatever that's going to help people notice they're like oh shit you know you hold a gajira and you get access to um seed rounds um as i said like you know the, the way we are trying to tune ourselves is not as a um you know just as a you know utility brand or as a you know play to earn brand uh, but rather like an investor brand like legit right the way we are trying to push ourselves and we want to be known as you know this is pretty much our i don't know if last uh, if any of you had seen it yet but um this is our linkedin page we are moving towards linkedin for real like you know businesses and work and stuff like that um just click that uh, you like this direction more than whitelist this is whitelist is never going to go away from us this is that's going to be there but this is what's sustainable this will never stop this will fucking never stop it's a web 2 web 3 irl business any of these investments uh why do you think people are going to come to us because even today man i'm not exaggerating we had a call with a guy who's a big fucking name and he's connected directly with emirates they're coming with a crazy ai technology that's going to put let's say nanopass to no use right you know all the ai stuff what nanopass is trying to promise and give these guys have a high level of development and they want to give this free to all the gojira holders so we are still in discussion okay don't don't go and jump um, that we are getting that but imagine the same desktop assistant but ai on a on a crazy level but you get it for free right uh, where it's going to be your personal assistant with artificial reality and you know the which is the future right so um you know the the amresh brought us the connection like you know pretty much uh, you know so but just think of this why did they come to us Right? They just want an exclusive partnership with us. 
and they told us we do not care if you tell us not to participate with any other uh, project if you don't want us to give any benefits to any other project we want you in first because we really respect you we spoke around a few of the projects and they learned that gojira is the most transparent and the best team in terms of you know no dodgy stuff right which is what web2 brands want right um why do Bra- why why gojira because two things right it's in the let's call the blue chips right the, as you guys perceive uh, moonbirds and artifact and all those things as blue chip the reason why they cannot approach the blue chip because of inaccessibility their founder is not available on twitter they get thousands and thousands of emails they're moving towards play to and they made their money i don't even know what's their motivation all right next tier of brand is what we are at, 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 at like you know at the stage i don't want to call ourselves blue chip or anything like that but we are in the second tier right second tier in terms of purely let's say the floor or the reach or you know people us knowing us in the space like you know projects like ours or llamas and kaijus or whatever right but what's different right why they come to us as i said like till date like transparency wise no one can beat us right financial management wise no one can de- can uh, beat us right so these guys asked around they learned about it and they came to us straight up right uh, and if you see our linkedin page uh, which was created recently um the narrative that our marketing team and us where we work together and the narrative that we are building is the silicon valley of web3 right the silicon valley of web3 targeting the web2 and uh, you know irl projects where you come to us it's a one stop solution right so one stop solution from anything to everything like you know your web3 services your you know it's not just about launching nfts again like you know this ai and ar is not just about launching nfts right it's about about the technology 8080 tools is not just about the uh, nfts again it's the use case a legit uh, issue that's there in the space trying to solve it and lama spoke really highly about 8080 tools like you know it's he's not partnered with it he's, he hasn't got anything he just did one ama and he loved because he told that how much of money was spent for the dev work and now you know it seems too good to be true but we're going to prove it even before the 8080 is launched right so providing saas right like uh, products as uh, services kind of thing is what like you know is important um and you like you know i think some of you i think keep asking this question like you know uh, how are we going to benefit as holders right like as in like you know you make money how are we going to benefit i would say ask the same question for board apes or doodles or any of your projects there is no equity stream no one's working on equity stream you're holding a 50th nft 100th nft they make billions um you know but why is there no question about how are we going to get the money i think shoreline just asked the question like you know the vault how are we going to access the vault or how are we going to um you know benefit f- just because we have let's say even if we make 20000 eth how are we going to benefit right there's no easy way but i think we worked out a way right uh, but for that we need significant of money in first like i hope you all understand we cannot be distributing 1 eth uh, or 0.5 eth or something now and then go broke and then you know nothing to develop uh, after that right we need like regular stream of income for that but we worked out a way a very like you know simple strategic way there's few options um you know how um, you know we could be distributing and looking at uh, you know looking at this uh, like let's say revenue sharing as a option uh, where we just drop you know i'm just like you know please again like you know don't take this as a word yet because we are still have to clear up with the legal team and stuff and it's quite some time away right it's not going to come back tomorrow sure line i'm letting you know it's not going to be like tomorrow we need like solid funds solid revenue as uh, revenue set before we can even like look at this because no web2 or no web2 startup or no irl startup pays back even their investors in like a year or two or whatever like it it has to be a process but the question i want to ask again any if there's a web3 project that's paying back people do let us know i'm happy to immediately look into it right there's no way even boreps tomorrow make 10 billion dollars i don't think they're going to be looking at you know, in in terms of profit sharing or becoming an equity holder because nfts are seen as commodity and not as um, you know legally you can't do shit to anybody right so <clears throat> having said that the idea is just giving you an idea right one of the i'm being really open here and how we have been talking with the um, you know the legal team the idea is that eth would be dropped to uh, a genesis or genesis holders for instance and you cannot claim the eth it can be a monthly or it can be a bi-monthly or a annually or whatever it could be like a you know pretty much like a general um 
you know, um, this thing, right? So you cannot be claiming it until you do KYC, right? But if you want to do KYC, what's the difference between us and a Web2 thing, right? So, which is where we would allow you guys to just keep accumulating the ETH, for instance. And you do not have to do KYC if you don't want to. And the ETH just gets accumulated. And pretty much when you want to sell it, because, you know, somebody from Dubai came it without doing a KYC because the requirement is different in UAE compared to uh, US, right? So he wants to do KYC, he can just buy the Gojira Genesis from you for the floor plus whatever ETH is accumulated at a discount or something like 5% or 10% discount and he can claim the ETH. Right? This is a way that we have worked out, right? Which we had to, you know, this is just, we are trying to see there's better ways, but this is legally easy for us, you know? And um, I don't know how many of them have figured this out, but we have like a really solid like guys from even the Gojira Genesis holders who have been helping us with this, right? So, um, to whom is the KYC? Those who want to claim the ETH what they receive. So, King, for instance, you hold a Genesis and I drop you one ETH because let's say we become a, a generating so much of income or whatever in like few months, right? Um, and if, if you're getting one ETH airdropped, you do the KYC to an external agency, right? So, you, there'd be a UI for you to claim the one ETH. We'll ask you to submit documents. It will be done by an external agency. Right? Like pretty much there's multiple hundred agencies who do KYC, which is accepted and regulated by the international standards and stuff. So they confirm your KYC and once you get a verified tick or whatever with your in your UI, who needs those documents? We we pretty much have to collect those documents. Obviously, it's it's almost like just like your your you have been in stocks, right? So how how do you get your dividends? Who has the details of your KYC stocks? Right? We do not touch it. Right? We do not touch it till, because we are being legal, man. We don't have to worry about IRS. <laughs> because we are, you guys, you want to claim profits. You can't escape without paying tax, you know. Like, you know, if that's your aim, you can't do that. That's why you sell it to fucking somebody in UAE or something. You you sell for a 5% loss or whatever. Yeah, we that's what, we collect KYC, right? That's basically an external inst agency, but we still have the documents that they're working for us. So we won't touch those documents the the main thing is like we do not want your details right so it will be there with a securely say i mean secured with the external agency and only if at all you know there's a, some kind of a scrutiny or something that comes and checks whether we are doing everything right we be like yo this is all the kyc of all the people you have paid you check you know all the transactions there we are safe you are safe so if you don't want to pay taxes and IRS comes, that's on, on that's not on us. We are paying you even the ape coin, right? The ape coin is a taxable event. Our ape coin was dropped, it's a taxable event. So if you paying or not paying is up to you. I'm not gonna give tax advice. But all I'm saying is that we found a legal way where we could legit do it when we reach that point. So coming back to Shoreline's questions about when we'll <laughs> when we can see the um, uh, thing grow massively. If I know 100% that it's going to grow massively tomorrow, I will buy all the Genesis on the floor. I'll buy all the Gen 2s. So I cannot answer that because we are doing our best. We are building multiple revenue streams. I'm hoping that we are doing, um, even on comparison to a lot of other projects and other Web3 uh, brands, we are definitely uh, higher off the uh, revenue stream model because we are releasing products and tools. So whether the market accepts it, whether how many millions or thousands or whatever that's going to come out we cannot predict at this stage um so obviously the best case we are hoping that you know all our all the products and the tools what we're going to release are more relevant to the space and a lot of them would need it uh, uh, but apart from that like you know even the whatever the why um the launch pad or the advice three or web three services and stuff that, that's where it's bringing us the income like you know um it's it's for a startup first couple of years survival right um, 10k per day passively yeah so for us for any startup um, it's just like you know survival in the start so um, as I said like you know the suggestions form like you know if you guys any of you are in a business or any of you have the business ideas or suggestions or think, think you think that you know the money could be used in a better way to make more um, to buff up a vault right just post it in the suggestions like you know we as i said like you know it's it's a group thing we are doing it together uh, we are doing we are using our brain power but as a community if you use our brain power and you come up with some ideas that you know you think are gonna make us like 20 million dollars per annum like you know just like that more than happy to uh, read it and see right um 
yeah i mean that's that's pretty much i think what it is like you know uh, um that's where we stand and we that's as i said we will keep doing the right things we have the suggestions from any day you feel like we are deviating or you think there could be something better please do fill it like you know i think as a community as i said we want i, I want our community to be the be the smartest community right not in terms of just floor and stuff or i'm not telling us to pump the floor or something but smartest in the terms of like you know um these things like you know instead of just going and fudding about something or just being upset that the floor is down or eth is crashing or nfts are going down and stuff but rather work as a team like this is your chance where you i reward people like you know just like that i don't you know we in gojira not just me like you know we just reward people just you know for their ideas or whatever they've given us helped us um you could you could be pretty much like you know be part of it i'm not just telling it just for the sake like you know i didn't even make a tweet or post about it but like you know one of our pretty much one of our uh, staff like you know i mean staff or even a long term member who believes um believe believe in us like you know you just post i mean i just saw this tweet i'm just putting it you know it's not something i did it now just for the sake but if you check the floor i mean if you check the tweet he's like you know spc broke and stuff like that right but it's kind of like invested a lot in gojira but for me i'm not just telling that i'm i'm doing this for everyone but um you know that but i pretty much like just contacted him because he's been like you know one of our you know long term uh believers and stuff you know like and this is out of our pocket not taking from vault or not touching any of your funds so i just pretty much saw this and we sent him a message and i sent him like you know i'm I'll, i'm sending you that money right um so you know that's 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 pretty much what we see you come up with an idea you we believe that it's good idea and we are un- implementing it i'm going to reward you right it's either it's personally or from the vault or whatever it could be so you know i'm not either there's two options right either you try and inv- you believe in us you buy the nft and you wait till we deliver you trust the team completely because you're busy right that's completely fine like bones is here like you know he's he's a fucking like legend uh, met him like multiple times in melbourne he's a guy who just doesn't even know what's happening with gojira he likes us he believes in us but he, you know he just continues his work and he's holding it right or be the other side where you come up with suggestions you come up with brilliant ideas you get rewarded for it i'm not going to just as i said like you know I'm, i've i think so far anyone who's helped us right um 100% have helped them in, and not only me jamie ambrish any of our team members and even our holders as such like maverick and few others giving our jira tokens or whatever right we like you know as i said like you know this is maybe i'm not marketing it well you know maybe a lot of them are marketing better than oh i gifted this guy this i did this that and all those kind of things maybe i'm not marketing for people to see what's happening but i don't care because i want people to understand why this is happening not just see a tweet and be like oh shit you know that's amazing but rather why this was done because pau he's been a big time supporter he's he's never questioned about the floor and stuff he's got the legendaries i mean like prayer gentus he only keeps giving suggestions he volunteered to be a vault keeper he didn't want money and stuff he just wanted to volunteer right and he's believed and he's invested plus without asking questions he's come in to help the community so when he's having a problem like this it's dumb if i don't help him because this amount can like you know he doesn't have to liquidate anything no what i'm saying is it's not like i'm going to come out and give money to everybody but the point here is that as a community do two things right which is going to help us either just chill out you trust in the team and you chill out it's fine because we're not expecting everybody to give suggestions or number 2 instead of just worrying that oh shit floor's gone down nfts are going down and stuff just give your suggestions and if the suggestions are good we have your discord ids in the form i'll reach out i'll give you a white list or give you some benefit or something why you would feel like you know that you're you know i, I mean let's be honest right whatever said and done it's a reward based world you know not everybody can do stuff for free right this is a reward expecting world in some way or the other either a, you'll expect even whether it's irl stuff you'll at least expect a, a thank you tweet right if you are rich you're going to expect a thank you tweet if you're rich and greedy you're going to expect more money if you're poor you're going to expect whitelist spots or money so this is a reward world right so I, i'm not going to be like i'm like you know, i'm being open about it right we have to reward people to continue and it's it's an incentive it's not a free world right where everyone's going to work for free and shit and free work is never like you know most of them don't appreciate so you're going to be rewarded as such as in like it's a promise like you know if your idea is good um, or it can be any idea right the suggestions form it could be an idea that can change us that has helped us 
that showed some visible change you all are like as i said no one's smarter than each other in this room right you could be having a good you know you might be in a very big position in your web too like you know you could be probably a fucking like consultant or you can be a you know like an investment banker or whatever right that's pretty much how we picked up our jira money mind team like you know smart um you know finance guys you know like uh, jay kong james kong uh, sack attacking and v money investment bankers and stuff like that so you guys would be you know we are as smart as you that's it right so you have any ideas to develop the business or improvise or push this further or you have like connections that you can help us reach don't think that your um, your effort would go to waste right one thing is obviously helping the brand in your investment and number two we'll you'll be rewarded in some way or the other you know so um you know some of them don't like this reward methodology like you know where you're like yo why are you giving this rewards they don't deserve i mean why should you do this like you know you can't sustain it 100% it's sustainable if your met- your help is going to push a brand and make a million dollars and paying you like 1000 or 2000 dollars extra here and there or a whitelist spot why is it not sustainable right so um that's my point like you know instead of just us complaining or just fudging as a community if we can just you know come up with some suggestions or nice ideas um or the way to move this forward uh, as a team we all are more than receptive only thing we do not want is guys please uh, like you know i mean like shan please you know why is the floor dropping oh i'm sad the floor is dropping i don't know what to do man like legit i can sweep the floor right now i've got it enough to sweep the entire listing so what who's it going whom is it going to help I, it's not about the sweep like fucking like this probably going to be like 60th worth of sweep man like we can sweep it and completely take away all the listings but people keep uh undercutting like they don't know what's even coming like you know something is coming up in a week or so they don't even know what's coming and fucking like undercutting each other i'm like okay fine that means like you know we are we are not just sleeping we are getting investors who are going to be like you know not just buying one nft or one this thing you're looking at you know solu um, people where they're going to get like in sh- like you know in numbers right and people just undercutting for no reason without an understanding it's fine like you know i'm not going to come in and stop uh, or you know as i say like you know i never shame sellers we even use this term called short term profit takers or non understanding loss takers which is what's happening now so they don't understand what's happening they don't come to any ams they don't give suggestions they just pissed in general about every nft or our nfts and they just dump it and they undercut by 0.008 i can't i mean like it's kind of like you know the Uh, I accept sweeping the floor I can't do anything and I'm if the community really feels that uh the morale is down and you please sweep Shana fucking I don't I can, I can sweep it right money is not the issue here but the sweep is a short term solution you know it's not going to help it has to be a sweep by major organizations or some whales and stuff whale sweeping is not pretty good like you know I, that's why like you know it's like if they turn against you or something happens I think sweep itself is useless to be honest. It should be like one or two per person at most like you know and uh, make it valuable and you know you have to think twice before selling kind of thing. So um except the floor side of things anything that we could add or improvise or add uh, additional value what else as a team we could do you know at this stage um you know in this kind of uh a market we still here we still working the same hours we are not looking at the floor we never looked at the floor and no way it's going to bother us but we are presenting i'm open to questions how many projects have actually got a feedback form how many projects have actually got a suggestions form who's open to read all those There's so much of crap in there but even in, sometimes it's hurting to read as well i'm not going to lie like you know like it's just you know i invested all my money and i trusted you i'm losing all my money it's gone I'm, it's almost like i feel like killing myself some crap and shit like that like what do what do i do for that right as a team what do we do right we you know i think those ogs also especially you know that even my tweets have always been guys think before you invest you know it's not the very high risk high um, you know reward at the same time like you know what i was not i've never tweeted like yo i'm so bullish on gojira something is going to come up i've never hyped like uh, like a maniac ever right just to pump up the floor or something i've never done that almost always i've been like guys think think and buy if you can buy it i would love if you buy in but i don't know what's going to happen this has always been my tweets um i definitely can uh, hope that the ogs can um, attest to that like you know it's not because i was it was what what is the gain for me like honestly right um i i i've never like you know we i i think 
entire jira team we have never like hyped shit up just for the sake right we have almost always been um, uh you know as practical and as transparent and as clear as possible i don't even tweet a lot about gojira in my twitter because like you know there's a lot of people who just see it and they're like you know they're just waiting on the fence to buy and then they see one random like you know pump or, i mean like bullish tweet from some founder or whatever they go and buy in and then they kind of get upset because you know nothing comes out right so i think the ogs can watch that i've always kind of told people not just for gojira for any project uh, i've been like ask people to be practical and think twice before investing and never to over invest and stuff like that um not never discourage people from buying gojira but i've been practical about it right so except for the floor side of things um you know as i said like we are trying to do the right things um and legit i want to give a shout out to um, shoreline to be honest for one thing uh, the complaint about the lack of communication although i was like you know constantly he was posting about it i was a bit pissed at the time it was like a stress, like you know already we were stressful for other, about other things but that's what led to um this everyday ms which i think is definitely the legit ones who want to stay with us i think they are at least participating in one of the seven ams while traveling or while in the gym or wherever they are uh we're trying to just trying to connect with the team see what they're doing um i think that's definitely a um, a really good uh, value that came out of you know that but instead of it being a fud in the chat or instead of it being a irritated message in the chat now there is a form for you guys to go and fill in right and as soon as possible we'll definitely try to implement it it will take a bit of time as soon as you fill it's not going to be in a day give us like couple of weeks or something uh, time to like kind of um, come up with solutions and last uh, town hall i discussed about the three main uh, you know um things that people had requested for uh, the communication side that's fine kind of sorted the aim, the ams and stuff uh, delivery of uh, tools i mean delivery of products which is obviously we're going to prove it by launching it by by the squad of 3 so um i'll be discussing few of the good suggestions as well with you as community in the town hall and stuff um so that you know we can just go through together um going to singapore really helped with marketing i think pg should continue to work on the brand got a great strategist on dgen plays and whitelist but the project needs to further look to improve the image of the project do more things ecosystem yes so do more things involving ecosystems yes perfect we are working on it but i would also like to get your idea on how do we improve in the ecosystem right is a sustainable thing right the reason i'm asking this is i'm not i'm not just putting out for this particular comment it's easy to give suggestions give more utility give more value right but if possible in the form how do we add more value what's missing what do you think in your opinion is missing right do you get my point that's what's the thing like you know i can like you know um it's it's like you know we are going to we are obviously improving the ecosystem is going to be in our agenda and it is in our agenda right but maybe the idea what you have as an improvement to ecosystem might be different to the way we are working on where your suggestion now could help us You'd be like ah oh, shit maybe it's like costing us 3000 dollars a month but it's going to benefit 3000 people we can spend the 3000 dollars a month or even 10000 dollars a month if it's going to benefit like 3000 people or the tokens in some way in a sustainable way right and not burning tokens right because now like as i said like you know you just go to jira tokens and see how much of tokens are actually there in the pool uh, you just with 6 to 6 to 15 eth probably any at any given time we can sweep it and completely I mean, pump it up to like maybe 15 20 dollars i think uh, king maybe uh, you are more well versed in this you could see how many tokens are there and you could let me know how much of eth is probably needed to sweep out the entire tokens in the pool right so that's again like if i want to do it in the in the background like how hard is it for me to throw a you know the team to throw few eth from our personal wallet to pump it up for no reason right but again like sustainability and natural way of um, you know growth is important right so anything you feel is sustainable um like you know like as you said like here like you know for the sg and uh, for for peter like what you posted about um involving ecosystem or if it's a very generic comment and you believe the team to do it it's fine i get i mean that's fine right that's a that's a just a basic suggestion that's perfect but uh, if you can add some suggestions on what we can do to maybe add more value maybe if we hadn't thought about it it's going to benefit you it's going to benefit us it's going to benefit all the holders this is my point right so pretty much uh, 
um, you know, that's what I mean by, you know, being an educated community um, with the suggestions and stuff. Uh, using a tokenomics with tokens assassin it needs to be burnt but at the same time there needs to be a good amount and pull uh, able to do yep all right so this gift card thing 100 percent i we like months back right i think about two three months back uh, putting in gift card putting in um, um, you know um, you know amazon cards and uh, you know even like visa cards and all those things right uh, absolutely was in our agenda right for jira tokens right but i want to know how we can keep it sustainable because what that means if tomorrow we run out of funds right we cannot be putting in the gift card so it's gone after six months or one year or whatever right which is why we are working on another method right you be the buyer and you be the seller so what i mean by that as a gajira holder you could be a retailer or a seller okay and there will be a buyer which will be open to the entire fucking public and right? not just gajira holders Okay, so which means for every transaction we get a commission. We be a facilitator for, let's say you have a business or you have some gift cards that you wanna fucking like sell it or redeem or whatever, but we just have a transaction fees for it, right? So having Jira tokens for us to burn or this thing at this stage with gift cards might work for six months, maybe a year or maybe two years, but we cannot be um, running it unless until we depend on again royalties and regular income so that's not going to help us with uh, regular cash flow i understand if the jira tokens value is low and on a daily basis it looks low but till we bring that sustainable income in where we can regularly deliver this value for 5 years 4 years or whatever a long term um we cannot be dropping in cards and um, you know or other one time items like iphone or uh, laptop or uh, MacBook or whatever, right? Because uh, what's going to happen when we run out of funds, we cannot sustain it. Again, the tokens will tank, right? So uh, service is where it is. It has to be a service, right? So instead of, uh, um, you know, a product, it has to be service because products depend on income. So till we set the income, service, service where we facilitate multiple services. Like for instance, as I said, like Bones is there. He's got a voucher for his Melbourne restaurant. And he wants to give a 10% off up to $100 worth of value or something. There you go and buy with Jira tokens. We give him 90% of the tokens and we take we burn or take 10% of the tokens. That's sustainable because it's a service, not dependent on our income, but it's facilitating bonuses value to other members of the public as well. And there's a guy, Skybond, right? For instance, um, Skybond. Uh, he's got a villa in um, this thing. What is it? Hawaii, right? And here, if he's going to drop this service uh, in, in our servicing platform, let's call it servicing platform for now, and he's going to charge, say, 10,000 Jira tokens, and we give him uh, 9,000 Jira tokens, and we take 1,000 Jira tokens, or we burn 1,000 Jira tokens, or whatever, tell me if that's sustainable or not, because that's a service from peer-to-peer -peer servicing, and we being the facilitator, because each of you here have got some talent. It could be artists like Semplis. Right? Semplis is an artist here. It could be a it could be a fucking like maths tutor for instance right almost like fiverr in that sense right that is a sustainable model where you use the tokens where within the community ecosystem even if you buy and sell and dump every transaction 10 percent of the tokens get burnt so someone's going and buying for hundred dollars and another guy is coming and dumping for ninety dollars still there's a ten dollar plus gain for the token this is natural way of burning the tokens um i'm just going to let you guys process it right if someone's going to buy 100 dollars worth of jira from uniswap and pay bones or whoever is providing a service within the jira community uh, or whoever it may be 100 dollars worth of jira but only 90 jira goes to the guy and 10% gets burnt or 5% i'm i'm using a number this is sustainable because now we are not dependent on our income or anything but it's going to be a peer to peer servicing kind of model where we take a small percentage as you know uh, servicing fee a percentage gets burnt so the buy pressure is hundred dollars sell pressure is only ninety dollars so there's a plus ten dollar gain gain right so this is what i'm giving an example right not saying this is the product that we are launching or something but i'm just giving an example uh peter if you're there i hope you would agree what i'm what i what i on what i'm saying compared to a gift card uh because this model of uh, um, this thing right would mean sustainability we do not have to even the gift card sellers right if if suppose 
one of you have a shop where you have 100 gift cards or 1000 gift cards and uh, you know how you make money right you have 5% gain or something on it right like you know like google play card uh, you buy a $100 google play card from colts you're going to pay $104 i think or something like that or whatever like you know like the visa card or something this $4 if we can charge you guys $100 uh, for a hundred dollar gift card, if we can maybe charge you hundred and twenty dollars worth of Jira, and we go and dump the hundred dollars back to recover the hundred dollars, and the twenty dollars of Jira can be burnt, that is sustainable and it's beneficial for you because you're burning your Jira token without having to take it to your bank, take it to Binance, pay tax, and claim this. Right? Like this is sustainable. It's fine for us. Right? So basically, what I mean is, we put a hundred dollar gift card. But we charge you one twenty dollars worth of Jira, but as you're earning Jira passively, right? So you go and burn your Jira and you claim this gift card. Then we go and dump the Jira in the marketplace or something. You're buying, you're getting one twenty dollars worth of Jira, but we are giving you hundred dollars worth of gift card. But the benefit for you is that you do not have to take to your bank or Binance or something. The hundred and twenty is just an exaggeration, but let's say hundred and five dollars, okay, or five dollar um, extra commission or something where it's better than paying tax, you know, like instead of paying 30% or 25% tax, now you're just paying $5 extra in Jira tokens, which you're not paying for, but just earning passively. Maybe that works, right? These are the things that we are, like, you know, want to, you know, we, we just want to, we kind of work out a model of sustainability before we launch a product. Most of them just go forward and just launch a project without thinking about a lot of things. And then they cannot sustain it, guys. Like if I come out and do this, you might be happy for a month or two. We saw it once where Jira jumped. I mean, Genesis jumped to like, you know, 5 ETH or 6 ETH or whatever, or 4 ETH or something. Obviously, the market has crashed. That's a different story. But what is Pudgy Penguins doing? What's Doodles doing? Or what's like, you know, uh, Artifact doing? They're still charging people more and still people are paying 6 ETH. But they're not providing any of these values. But still the floor is high, right? The brand value and the, you know, the brand value is like completely like, you know, on a different scale, but granted they all are in a different level and they've got like different VC connections. So we don't expect to have a brand built the way they built it, but we want to build position or take our position as the web three Silicon Valley, which no one has taken. Right. Um, you know, so basically, um, you know, positioning ourselves as a Silicon Valley of web three, no one's done that. Like, you know, where I don't think doodles is going to come out and do a web three servicing. I don't think Artifact is going to come and do an incubator or launch pad uh, because they, the way they move is different. And I don't think Azuki is going to come and do a play to earn because it doesn't make sense for their brand. So we being the Web3 Silicon Valley, we, are, we us positioning in that way, we can provide the Web3 services, we can provide whitelists, we can provide incubators, we can provide Jira tank, we can provide networking, network tool. You don't have to be limited just like Magma being a network tool. We can... Um, be the networking tool as well like a jira link which was used to recruit a lot of people already although it was not like a ui and uh, stuff like that so you know it's 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 like an all-in-one package you know where as a holder as a person from outside uh you know there's going to be like you know use cases and benefits so um, of course that's that's the point um peter uh i know gift cards may not be sustainable long term, and you can have such as people can claim gift cards with limitations plus holding this also it can be uh yeah maybe some of course for some amounts we can easily do that let me say let's say we keep thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars but that's why i'm just I, as i said I'm, i really apologize for the delay in the gasless marketplace because there's a lot of things we want to do we do not want to do it in our current marketplace because it's just you know first come first serve and all those kind of things and you know it's killing the gas and you know it's pumping the gas so now you know within this week i'm hoping once it's done We'll be adding a few stuffs, you know, like say even iPhone, for instance, or whatever, or whatnot, with Jira tokens, right? Um, you don't have to worry about gas anymore. If you didn't win because you didn't click, or if you didn't participate in a reverse Dutch auction, or a blind auction, or multiple ways for you to win few things, or even a buy now, we don't want you to waste your money on gas and like, you know, staying up at this time and all those things, right? With this kind of a marketplace, we don't have to worry about that, like, you know, with, um, like, you know, where you just deposit your Jira tokens and you sleep and you like something, you participate. If you don't like, just it's fine. You can participate in FCFS. You didn't win that. Maybe try for the, uh, you know, reverse touch auction. If you didn't win that, wait for probably the blind bidding. If you didn't win that, it's okay. Like, you know, at least your, your gas didn't get burnt. 
we can accumulate and like you know pretty much participate in the next one so um i think the the literally i think the problem was because we were as i said we were relying uh, we were relying on a um <clears throat> like you know an outsourced team for a lot of things to keep costs low uh, that's changed now right so that's why like you know we were, we pretty much did everything from scratch like you know the tools and the marketplace it's pretty much started from scratch from almost like i would say like august it literally started from scratch because the previous team was taking too long and and our our main team like you know for them to start on it and work on top of that was hard so we pretty much scrapped it but they're working full time on it now like you know um a big team uh, pretty much on it right so that's why we are what we told like 4 months back we pretty much are getting it done in the next in the in like the last 2 3 weeks and like now it's in the testing phase right like for bugs and shit it's because like you know we have our own dev team now right any kind of ideas any kind of implementations uh, we could be doing it a lot more quicker now so yeah i have one more idea if you could somehow work around getting pg as a merchant of sorts there are some companies conversion of transactions for credit card payment acceptance pretty much right exactly right you know i think our rio corp that's merchant right this is the thing right this is what's um you know what i wanted to emphasize on um uh, legit like you know we being a merchant being a service provider is what's going to be sustainable and this service providing as a holder what do you get as a benefit as a holder we have to work towards equity Right, whatever it may take, it doesn't matter. Like you know, I'm telling you this. Mark my words. You're gonna come back in a year or two or whatever. Bode running it based on IP is bullshit, or any project. IP is not this kind of an IP. Like ten thousand Bodeps looking the same. No one's gonna just buy a Bode to put it as a poster boy image or something and pay like you know hundred, two hundred or three hundred ETH to buy or even four hundred ETH or how long is it gonna keep going up? They're just using the IP as a thing, but. anyone can just modify i think any of the lawyers here can confirm that i think peter you're also lawyer like ip is not just about like you know uh, they themselves have like multicolor background variants and bodeps like you know just everything is the same i think some of you might have seen the tweet um just by selling out on ip is not going to take you to 1000 or 2000 eth without having a ch- chance of you know entry into a um uh, you know um a an actual service or a exclusive kind of thing which no one can get it or a equity holder or a provider if tomorrow board apes are like guys 10000 people plus macy plus bakc you're going to be the equity holders um of the brand right that turns the table but the question is how are they going to sustain 10000 nfts which is why we well we thought out of we didn't just come up with this 333 genesis Uh, or 3333 just for the sake you know i think you guys can agree that we could have launched 10000 gentoos for the same price and could have made more or we could have sold the you know we could have even the genesis could have been at a higher quantity the reason we wanted to keep it low is because having low number is easier to work as uh, with equity right if we if that's the direction we are trying hard to take that's something that we can work out with 333 but it's impossible to work with 10000 plus 20000 macy's plus another 10000 bakcs or 100000 land or whatever it's almost impossible to move towards uh, equity side right um you tell me like wh- how and with the low numbers how many projects are there that could turn into a equity thing i don't i don't see many many try to copy a numbers or many try to copy a style like you know couldn't sustain so the thing is right the 333 or the small number was thought out as a vision last year I was like me and Jamie when we were talking like Jamie what's what's happening like you know these NFTs are pumping but in what way are you going to get value without being a ponzi right is equity being a part of like a brand like Nike or an Adidas or you know um, maybe like you know if as i say like you know if if let's not go that extreme let's maybe take maybe like an mid tier brand what could be like maybe Wrangler i don't know if you guys know Wrangler you know it's not like a not like a Nike or it's not like an Adidas, but imagine like a brand like Wrangler, which is still still pretty good. But if they had launched their NFTs and they built their brand around that funding instead of going to VCs or instead of going to other people, and uh, there's only three thousand people or three hundred and thirty-three people that were involved, let's say the brand equity of the Wrangler is completely 
on on Genesis and the dividend payments is on Gen2. What would be the value of each NFT be? Write it down five years or ten years or whatever. Right. This was the simplest idea that we had when we had this three three number. We didn't know where we were gonna go. We didn't know whether the if you guys didn't accept Genesis as a good this thing or you didn't like me or Jamie or the team, we couldn't have got to this point. Obviously, so it was a uh, we started with that number. We started with that with that mindset. Right. Uh, we started with that mindset, and uh, you know, luckily, I think the market accepted it, and we were able to, you know, come to this point uh, for us to proceed. Um, so, you know, pretty much that's that's what it is. Um, talking about VCs, uh, P B G looked to pitch the project to VCs. Uh, we have, as I said, like you know, VCs have been like our be like in our friends for quite some time in that in that sense. Um, you know that's how Jira Tank's idea even came because few of like you know Jira Tank can be funded by VCs and stuff for really good ideas, um, and uh, even tomorrow, right? Like uh, we have a call with the VC. The question is, what do we need the fund for? Number one, at this stage. Number two, do we really want to give up our equity? Uh, I don't want to give up equity. That's why we even launched Jiraverse, and I told that it's a point. As much as possible, I don't want to give up equity because. Getting into VCs mean you lose control, right? I think uh, a lot of you could probably, if any of you have worked or know about VCs, could elaborate on this. But um, getting into VCs is almost it doesn't matter like what percentage, you know, it's ten or five or twenty. They can literally start threatening you. They hold you by the by the balls, right? They if you don't listen, they'll be like, I cancel all the deals, I cancel all this, and your project is dead. Right now, no one can do that, right? No one can do that to PG. No one's and come in and be like, yo, I can screw up this deal. Everything has been by us, right? That is also why Evolve was split. PG and Evolve split, just remember, and I think I might have told this uh, before as well, but the reason why PG split, I mean, PG and Evolve as, as a two brand entities were split is also for the very same reason. Evolve could be this VC play. Evolve could be the usage of all our connections. I do not care if we lose... Um, a lot of equity for evolve because that's a different play because there we need ba massive connections um, into the fashion world and into the lifestyle world and brand and stuff. But PG is our baby. It's it's where we, um, you know, we pretty much evolved from, right? Evolve and Gojira PG are gonna have its own set of equities and use cases as I told in the start. But evolve, I don't mind giving up equity, right? That's the main reason for the split. Remember this: Evol gets a VC involvement, and Evol gets a connection or a you know um, a partnership. It means PG holders are benefiting, right? Evol is uh, you know th there is a pie chart. Like you know we this uh, for any of you who saw a Singapore presentation, there's a pie chart. Uh, no, sorry, Venn diagram. Venn diagram where um, you know Venn diagram where we had PG in one Venn uh, in one circle, and Evol in the other circle. And the one that's kind of like, uh, you know, in the in the center, of what's connecting them both is the Jira tokens, right? Anything with uh, Evolve or anything with this thing, Evolve won't earn tokens, right? Um, but they would need to be using, like, almost like, let's say, even Dust token in that sense, or even Ape token to buy the land or whatever. So Evolve would require Jira tokens. Instead of paying ETH, they're going to pay in Jira tokens for anything and everything, right? Like, you know, it's a mint for, uh, let's say, for trades or buying merch or whatever that could be maybe right so this is how the you know evolve and pg will be linked and that's probably the only link in terms of um you know um this thing right like in terms of uh, utility and such so what we do for pg is going to be the metaverse web3 service side silicon valley of web3 uh, but evolve is not the silicon valley of web3 evolve is essentially the uh, you know the web2 game you know let's call it the web 2 game into uh, innovation technology um, you know vcs whatever that could be coming in there and art ip and brand right so art ip and fashion brand lifestyle brand so have all this that's that's how we differentiate so as i said like you know a lot of things what we did for pg was not well received um, in the sense not well received in the sense like people didn't understand they didn't get into pg for those benefits what we are offering or working towards so we stopped there we put a halt uh Amresh pretty much uh you know we were discussing in the early stages of evolve um you know what are we doing like you know why are we offering these services when there's no you know people are not 
even here for those services. So uh, <clears throat> that's how Evolve uh, pretty much came up. So all the VC side of things, we are open for Evolve. So I'm not just, as I said, like, you know, I'm not kind of, I don't like to, you know, just, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm not posting this proof for any of these things because you know, it's not like, you know, I'd like to just, I don't know. Like, I just like to show, like, you know, we're not just bullshitting. So tomorrow, if you see that September 12, I've got a meeting with a guy called Dalton, right? And check what's his email, like York Street Capital. And what do you think that is, right? York Street Capital is pretty much a VC, right? So it's, a, you know, pretty much they're, they're a 50, it's a multi-million dollar capital firm. And they loved an idea that I proposed. I'm not going to leak that idea though, right? Loved an idea that I proposed, uh, met him two days back. And, um, you know, it's a pretty much, he kind of told it's a fucking like game changing idea. Um, I'm going to talk about funding and where does it go? That doesn't go to PG that goes to evolve. Right. So, um, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not say like, like Yorkshire.vc, let me post it so that you guys know. So Dalton there, that email there. So this is yorkstreetcapital.vc and that's Dalton at yorkstreetcapital.vc. So like, you know, I'm just posting here. So it's not like we do not have connections with VCs or we do not want to take VCs. We had intentionally avoided, but now Evolve is there. We have a range of people that we are talking with. If it matches our goal and our vision, we go forward. If not, we stay away. That's it. I'm never going to touch into or take, tap into. I don't want to, I don't want an Azuki play or a Moonbirds play. If legit Moonbirds was considered a blue chip and legit it was bought by such rich people and how it was portrayed, why the fuck is it 110 ETH now? Like, you know, if it was such a fucking blue chip that went to like 9.6 ETH now, right? So, you know, <laughs> VC play just, the only people that benefit is the founders and VC guys. Like, you know, you're, it's like maybe, you know, it's like a first come first serve. You know, you dumped at 35, like Tata, you made money. Somebody bought that. They're fucked now. Right? It's not about the percentage drop, it's about the number amount of ETH that was dropped. Right? From 35 to 18, almost 9 is like what? It's like 26 ETH of loss from $3,000. So, I can't, at least for us, I can't say that. Like, you know, percentage wise, maybe a drop is a bit more, but maybe 3 ETH loss, maybe 4 ETH loss, or even 5 ETH. I mean, paper loss at this stage. But Moonbird's crash is crazy, right? So, the thing is, like, it's not the VC play is not what like what do you think like you know in the sense major majority of the VCs right they're not here to if, um, how do I put it they're not here to um, you know make Web three great okay majority of the VCs are here to do a pump and dump play they're like oh you have ten thousand NFTs you know what they do they take five hundred for themselves across different wallets and they dump on your face right and like you know you like you know tell tell, tell them if if i really want me if i re give me a give me a week's time i'll show you i mean i i, I used to play with these wallets and stuff and breadcrumbs and search and all those things just give me a time and i'll show you a proof of how azuki's had like multiple hundred empty wallets which just dumped exactly at 30th before the fucking like you know the announcement of uh, the beans drop and didn't even look back right so and these were all minted early on. How did they exactly time and sell at 28 to 32 ETH? VC play, right? So it's up to you guys. So um, that's the reason why we haven't moved towards. It's not like sus. It's what's happening, man. They're open about it. What do you think? What do you what, like? VCs want to say, why, why do you think VCs are going to be like, yo, I love your project. I'm going to come and give you $50 million or $10 million. DigiDaiQ. DigiDaiQ was a free mint. But do you really think that DigiDaiQ, they didn't have like few nfts minted to their alt wallets and dump at 15. yeah i mean like if you're thinking again i think you're new to nfts all right <laughs> if you think that digidaiku maybe 100 or 200 whatever the numbers of free mint free mint is also like don't fall for free mints right just because free mint and it went to 15 doesn't mean it's a it's a great shit, right free mint means you can keep aside 10 or 20 percent of the nfts across multiple different wallets empty wallets tornado cash it or whatever what not you can take the money dump it on the holders 80th 10th 12th or whatever and you made it a lot of money back than just minting right to like 10 percent of digi daikus at peak when it was flying um if you had had just do the numbers 15 ETH times 10 times 100 1500 3000 ETH. Legit 3,000 ETH. 
by Digidaiku's 10% supply, if it was taken by the founder across wallets or even the team, that's 3,000 ETH. What's 3,000 ETH today? Like 3,000 times $1,700 is roughly $5 million. Not a small amount. And uh, who bought all those at that price? Us. As the general public, we think, you know, um, you know, oh, it's a VC, this guy has got proven record and VCs are coming. Just because VCs is coming, just don't go blindly ape and right. And uh, if you got in, if you got in the mint, good luck, sell it and get out, get the shit out of that. But uh, transparency is the key. Like, you know, can you just go through all the wallets that minted DigiDiQ if you have the time and prove me wrong. Like, you know, for once, just prove me wrong that nah, Shan, like all the wallets seems genuine. So I'll pretty much like, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, you know, do whatever you say, but like, you know, it's pretty much Tata come to my DM and prove I'll, I'll prove, <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. And I'm going to take your Genesis, right? <laughs> that's the, that's pretty much the, uh, I'll give you my, I'll give you my one-on-one uh, -on -one if you win. And if I win, you're going to give your Genesis. That's, that, that's the deal. And so you go and like, you know, go through all the DigiDaiko minted wallets, at the start. And tell me you don't find 10% of the wallets which are brand new and created. <laughs> right. So the thing is like, you know, uh, the, the reason I'm saying this is because I didn't know this as well. I'm not saying that I, I came into the space knowing all this, right? I didn't know this, but till like three, four months back when people started considering Gajiria as a top project and Shan as a somewhat a decent influencer, all these people reaching out to me and giving these proposals giving these kind of, um, you know, proposals and giving these uh, brand manuals and, you know, VC contacts. That's how I got to know what these fuckers do. You know, legit, this is exactly what they do. Like, you know, they're like, uh, you know, you want to do this? Mm, okay, we give you this much, but you got to do this. These are the conditions. You have to give us 30% of the royalties. You have to give us this much of NFTs at the start. You have to like, you know, listen to us in terms of the other drops and future drops. And... I'll tell you one thing, right? Not all projects are willingly dropping more collections, right? Not all projects are willingly dropping collections. They are forced. They're forced to drop more and more collections. Like Karafuru, I have seen hands, like, you know, in front of my eyes, what happened, they were forced to launch the 3D collection. They were doing well. They were forced to launch the 3D collection by whom? Atmos and Hype Beast. It comes with the price, right? Every, every partnership, every deal that you make, if you don't protect your brand, it comes with a price. You sell yourself in some way, it's going to come back hard. I mean, but who's benefiting now? The founders and the VCs are benefiting. The brand is probably down now. But who's benefiting now? The founders and the VCs, we keep, you know, all they can say is, sorry, guys, you know, market didn't, uh, didn't like, you know, accept us. But the truth is, the team made a mistake. Our team went with this thing, which they thought was good at the time. I'm not blaming anybody. But that screw up the brand. You keep complaining. You go to Twitter, make hundred tweets. You think it's gonna affect the founders in any way? Do you think they're really? No, I'm not. I'm not saying about Karafru in generally any project. Do you really think they bother about it? They fucking have the money, man. They have. They're living in their mansion. What are you gonna do? Right? You cannot go and lodge a complaint because NFTs are seen as commodity, not as a security. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna get them on? Get them to pay back or something? Nothing. So. If you, as I said, like, you know, VC play is not as you think it is, right? And if everybody wants us to do VC play, and that's what you, every majority of the community wants, we can also get it done, like, you know, but, you know, and then don't blame us if the project after that, like, you know, collapses or we completely lose control. They make the money, they run away and, you know, and no one will blame the VC. Has anybody blamed the VC so far? Never. Has anybody blamed Animoca brands? Never. I can never blame, but Animoca brands have got so many failed projects. Everybody thinks that VCs are successful thing. Uh, y Combinator, right? Have you, um, you know, yeah, I know, Peter, I'm just explaining uh, in general so that like, you know, these are some, some, let's say, perks of being somewhat a founder in the space, you know, getting to know of other things. Uh, y Combinator has got so much of like, dead shit, like, you know, why? Wow. Like, you know, it's, it's, they just see one of the hundred unicorns, but 99% of the uh, 99 can fail, uh, but it's still seen as a great play, right? Like, oh, fuck, this guy's from XY Combinator and stuff. And people are like, oh, shit, you got a huge profile. Means nothing. All right. So, um, yeah, I think, I hope, like, you know, this is what I want us as a community. We learn, we try to start seeing things as it is. Blockchain, it's transparency. Ask for the transparency. Let's be the... Let's be the change we want to see.
So, um, thoughts on Walter? I'm not going to comment on anybody as such, right? You guys do what you think is valuable or what is what you think is happening. There were some wallet issues of how they were sweeping the floor and stuff like that, and all those links and stuff were posted for Izu and shit like that. So, I do not know. I'm not going to comment. I'm friends with Walt, but at the end of the day, what are you going to do now? If, they, if it's bad, if it's shit or whatever, they've got 8 million, 8 million US dollars now, totally. Right, from P, from PA and Izu, right? So what are you gonna do? If, if I even if I'm gonna say it's dead, nothing's gonna happen. They got the money. The best thing to do now is either just hold and believe that you can recover your this thing back, or believe that the product is nice or whatever. If not, it's your choice. Like you know, it's, I'm not, I mean, as I said, I do not know what exactly is happening in the back. Uh, everything is there in the blockchain for you guys to see what's happening to the funds or how the funds are going or. You guys got to ask the question, man. Like you got to, you guys got to ask the question: How much is the team getting paid? You guys all wanted Easy Whitelist. No one told here in this chat as well as anybody told Shan. I don't want Easy Whitelist except maybe Black Bull or something, right? One or two guys. Everybody wanted Easy Whitelist, right? But did anybody think at that time why is there a new collection coming up? Why do they want to do this mint price? No, because the hype was there. You want to make money. You want a quick flip. Everybody here wanted Easy. I'm not, I'm, I mean, again, I'm not saying this is just Izu. I'm just saying in general, right? Everybody wants it. And as soon as it mints out or it's got this issue, they're like, shit, they shouldn't have launched. They fucked up and stuff. We are the problem. We go and encourage these projects. We mint 3,000, 4,000 of those and 5,000 of those. The money is gone from the contract. After that, what's the point, right? As a community, if we do not, um, you know, as a community, if we do not, or as like you know, as a Web three as a community, if we do not start questioning the teams, like you know, of transparency and like you don't have to reveal, you don't have to be doxxed, but at least in in your in your wallets or transactions, you can you can uh, you can pretty much tell like what is your salary. Why is it a problem to sell what tell what's your salary? Like you know, as a, as a founder, if you're taking a million dollars, or I think there was a recent PX and thing as well about the founders each taking hundred ETH, and me and Jamie were looking at each other and we were like dumb fucks. Like you know, we should, we should have taken at least ten ETH. We didn't even take like ten ETH as profit from Gen Two, or because that's not profit. That's your money. How can I call it a profit, right? So you know, that's pretty much the um, uh, the thing. So it's up to us. It's not. It's not going to be. Um, how do I say? It's not on um, um, on the team. It's on us as a as a as a project. Uh, I mean, as a community, as a Web three community, to ask those right questions before we mint. After you mint, you ask any questions. It's fud, right? Before you mint, you ask questions. That's legit questions. So um, yeah, I mean, why not do this on Twitter Spaces rather than on Discord? I don't know. This I feel it's more personal here. There's better questions coming up here. Twitter Spaces. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't. As I said, guys, I don't want to pump our floor, or I don't want to just talk this and bring our floor. Brand awareness, uh, VCs or uh, Twitter Spaces. I'm more than happy. Which is what we got to, for for doing that. I first need the products ready. I'm not gonna do shit till these three products are out. Okay, as Gojira, we first have to prove our capability with these products, right? So these products, let it come out. I'm going to have spaces regularly. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show that what we have done, what innovation or what changes we have done, um, you know. And uh, before that, I just don't want to... Now it's empty words, right? I, that's how I see it. I see it as an empty word because, yes, you know, I'm not going to... I'm taking this blame as such. You know, I'm not going to be like uh, stating or blaming anything else. I don't want to just put the blame on funds and shit. But we delayed, okay? We did delay, and it happened for a good cause in the end. That you know, obviously, the market crashed and the money didn't get wasted. But still, we gave, we pretty much gave a tentative date for a few things, and we didn't, you know, pretty much come up with that product. So till that product is out, I do not have the face to go and, you know, go and talk in Twitter Spaces. At least I don't want to, right? This is like a personal thing for me. I've kind of taken up as the. Um, almost like a project manager kind of role now to, you know, like me, Jamie, uh, Jamie is pretty much the CEO kind of thing, uh, looking at the coordination and I've taken the brand development role uh, for the last six weeks. So uh, for me, it's, I'm taking it really personal now, in the sense like, you know, after my work and this thing, I'm like, you know, it's almost like a treating it like, you know, like how we do it in Tesla or any of this work. So till these two products or these three products are out, I don't want to go to Twitter spaces, right? Um, yeah, yes, like, you know, I don't want to keep blaming on the funds and like, you know, our issues with the previous dev thing or whatever. 
so uh, let me let's get this product out and um, you know we as promised it's like you know and then for to explain these products with the marketing plan what amresh and the marketing team has got um we're going to market these products right in the sense to to reach a big of crowd and stuff um then i pretty much get through uh, on twitter spaces with the, with the fucking proud uh, thing about the team and myself and all the community and then i talk about everything right um till i till i pretty much um you know get these products out i do not have the rights to go and talk about anything else right that's what i feel okay i'm um, you know it's kind of like uh, as i said a little bit personal for me at this stage now so um <clears throat> so till we get those products out which we are going to we are we are pretty much doing all the testing i mean again forgive us if there's going to be bugs and stuff right because um we are trying and testing it's a, it's a small number of people that's testing uh, but we are at least trying to make sure that you know uh, we do, we don't come up with a product then come up with bugs majority of the bugs and the major bugs shouldn't be there from the testing and stuff uh, this is just a v0 and we have a full team for each of these things so if there's any bugs there's going to be instant uh, rectification um so um i think uh, that's that's pretty much what i think is the plan um so yeah i mean yeah that's that's pretty much answers the question about um the um this thing about the twitter spaces and 100% i used to do a lot of twitter spaces you know and it's not a, for me to come and speak about the same thing in twitter spaces is not that hard but this is more personal i wanted for our community and i'm hoping that there's no fucking like rats and snitches here like you know <laughs> i'm just hoping that it's 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 within us and i'm pretty sure it is not because in this market for you for someone to come and sit up in a uh, you know a pga ma in a discord on a sunday Uh, you have to be dedicated to the project at least in some way or the other so i believe that uh, um you know everybody here is is here for the project so you know so whatever we speak is purely my whatever i feel and not financial advice or not any you know this thing but it's purely like what i feel more as a holder more as a nft investor or nft trader than as a founder at this stage all right so um yeah i mean we so youtube linkedin twitter kilamrish all right he's working on i mean trust me these guys are actually we have got a really good marketing um team and you know plan now as i said like you know even the way we are tweeting we're not just randomly tweeting and stuff we are we are bringing up the professionalism uh even in our tweets and stuff uh we're using like images we're using graphics and uh using we're going to use some videos trailers for important ones a lot of the time uh, people even gojira holders didn't even know what we were launching so that was a big 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 issue right so um so since it was a big issue like right, you know it's important that the world sees what are the things we are dropping like you know everybody um you know th- as i said like you know I, we don't market well like somebody gives 1 dollar and they tweet like you know they've given like crazy thing and there's a brand value created like you know i think someone gave away some giveaway uh, on twitter like two days back worth 500 dollars and it got like and he just posted that he gave away and there was like 500 or 1000 likes or something for that and we keep giving away randomly gen 2s and like you know um you know even like funds for within for people within the community or whatever and we don't just keep tweeting about it right uh, we don't even mention about it most of the time except in like some ams here or something just to show that i'm not bullshitting and stuff even with what we did with pow and stuff so um, maybe that's that's the thing right i i, I rely too much on uh, i rely too much on uh, word of mouth i think it's brought us so far but word of mouth is not enough to go to the next level right uh, word of mouth is perfect for a really organic strong team i think that help the genesis you know it's pretty much been super organic um yeah so um you know so that's the thing that we want to change right we are happy so far and we got a good strong develop core thing uh but i think you know the next set of marketing uh, thing is needed so which is where uh, ambresh and like few other guys that were recruited i think amrish you got to have a ama uh, with the marketing team one day man just to introduce who they are and what their background is and what they have done and stuff like that um i think you know it's good for people to i mean like whoever it maybe it's going to be 20 people watching but at least you know the 20 people it's worth for them to see um that you know that there's a solid team that we have got now for marketing as well Ajira has way too much stuff on their plate. I don't think so. I don't think we have way too much stuff. In fact, we 
have like one of the limited stuff and simple easy to achieve kind of stuff i would say i don't see anything uh, impossible for us to achieve maybe the impossible to achieve or a hard thing to achieve is probably a billion dollar valuation that's you know it's obviously not not every product will be accepted by the market but whatever products we have told or what we are planning the way we are moving is not a lot for us like we have 47 staff members now right like uh, from from maybe 15 a month and a half back right we're not burning funds it's all like people we pick from philippines uh india and stuff like that where we don't have to pay them too much but at the same time we pay them enough to you know sustain more than sustain their uh, day to day activities in the country like you know like 2000 dollars as a pay for a filipino uh, who's been getting paid like 500 or 600 dollars in their countries have to come full time with us and 2000 dollars is not a lot for us to pay right so we worked out a solid um, you know like financial planning and stuff with ken and stuff so um you know i'm just just kind of like posting this it's a very uh, i don't think why we should have any problems in executing any of it because uh you know i think with 47 people what we are trying to do is not that hard to achieve at all like you know in the sense hard to achieve is maybe the reach and the market and stuff like that that's the challenges but i don't think execution is going to be a problem right um ex- three verse is separate as in like three verse is not going to be an nft drop as such we are um we are onboarding um a lot more projects now probably llama verse is going to be the first uh, project to join three verse so there's an integration cost and stuff like that uh, coming into llama verse and like we are adding like five to six projects now like you know really top projects for three verse to be integrated into the ecosystem like three verse ecosystem so three verse is not going to be an nft but rather you can just the communities can play to win so just think of this right you just to hold a gajira you can just go and play and win some other tokens which is going to have liquidity because it's going to have seed rounds and stuff three wars is going to have uh, fund rounding and seed rounding and all those things we may open up to the holders i'm not sure right we may open up to the holders uh, if legally it's possible uh, but that's going to be like you know like pretty much the equity and the seed round uh, for three wars uh, but first we are working on getting the partnerships and top like you know four to five projects in the uh three verse system so three verse is essentially going to allow you as a holder to play to win i don't have to it's not a play to win where you have to earn to buy more tokens to make more tokens but just being a gajira holder just participate have some fun and uh, you know just win another token called eve so it's going to be called eve token that's going to have its own liquidity pool and stuff like something like snfts right so it won't affect jira or jira tokens in any value I mean in any way but it's just going to give you an extra benefit to earn some other token which you can sell or whatever so three verse is separate to evolve it's not we have equity in it we have 30% equity i think uh, 30% no 30 or 40 yeah about 30 or 40% equity in three verse like right? uh, the gaming thing but pretty much like you know and we get some tokens and stuff for the vault and our uh, this thing but uh, essentially you know it's not going to affect jira tokens or pg in any way but as gajira holders you can participate for free and win something like regularly right a three verse is separate it's not uu or anything so uu is a separate project three verse is separate so it's dev- so uu was kind of finding it hard to move so we got a separate gaming team in uh, um you know vietnam 20 plus gaming team this gaming team would cost like a million plus dollars in us but here you know um the guy who's leading um uh, uh, three verse ryan right uh, r y is is called this in the discord but his name is ryan he's ex ubisoft he was part of assassin's creed and stuff you know development and all those things so it's a solid co- a team um, you know when solid pitch uh, so first project we contacted was llama verse um you know and i think they're on board uh, we'll confirm soon with an announcement uh but yeah i mean there's the idea with three verse is it's going to generate income to us and the vault and stuff and uh, when the p2 uh, when the play meta is going to come or even if it doesn't come we don't care because this is going to target even the web 2 you can also play for fun uh, like a like a normal mobile app game right and you can just buy tokens with credit card and stuff to play it's going to be like it's not just going to target just web 3 audience as i said like you know it's going to target uh um, you know you, you saw how digidike was founder made multi million dollars from just a mobile game right from purely just buys of um, you know using credit cards and shit so 
um this is going to be a different tackle like it's you not know, we're not as i said we're not just targeting web3 or not ponzi thing where like the old play to earn it's called compete and win you know pretty much it's called compete and win um so you know you just play and the you know you can upgrade you have a your own skin you build your you know strategies or whatever uh, and we ideally want to target like you know twitch streamers and uh, esports players who have been reaching out to us for collabs and stuff for um, nfts so instead of using them for these nfts and stuff we want to use them for you know twitch streaming and you know like a competition and stuff where you know people can see what's what's three verse and what's the game and you know stuff like that so few of them tested now uh, we are still testing we are pretty much developing that but that's like an income stream for us and added benefit for gojiras that's it so um yeah i mean <clears throat> what else was there that's pretty much it i think any agreement on three words here i think this is pretty much the deck which is not public yet but like you know we kind of what we sent to uh so that's the game development team and this is ryan the second picture so <clears throat> you know pretty much it's a professional pitch deck and proper like you know um you know way of fundraising and stuff uh, targeting the web 2 and crypto crypto communities and not just nft communities right so that's the real bridge you know just targeting the N nft communities there's again uh, 100 people 1000 people that's why i question this why is why why do you think or why anyone here thinks that other side is going to be successful it's a 200000 land Uh, <clears throat> thing that's coming up it's again going to target only web3 audience and stuff and you know i don't know the revenue stream and how they're going to bring it back to the holders i don't think that's going to happen but you know that's that's pretty much the thing like you know this metaverse and all those kind of plays it's just like you know for a while maybe year or two i mean metaverse is going to be on the future but the thing is how many metaverses are going to be there sandbox decentraland you know you don't need like a massive metaverse and you know it's diluting the if you want to use metaverse as for advertisement 200000 is too much uh, to it's diluted no one's going to come and see it like you know if you have like billboards or advertisement boards and stuff so anyway so we uh, that's why we want to pretty much target you know web2 audience and also the crypto one so the the one i posted is what um you know Ryan uh, who's who's the ceo of the threeverse thing worked for ubisoft assassins creed and few other developments and the game development team from vietnam <clears throat> so pretty much like you know it's a pretty solid team i would say like and uh, since it's vietnam we are able they were able to sustain the cost right most of them failed there because a lot of them try from the us or uk or australia and you cannot it's not easy to ma maintain it like you know the entire team you can buy it for a monthly pay like you know in vietnam so the the main benefit or the main um, alpha here for three years is that they managed to get a studio in vietnam for this price like imagine imagine if we if we if we had just connected this to pixelmon this is like three times bigger than the pixelmon's gaming team before so yeah um other collabs all right so uh this is the problem right like we already are getting way too many collabs and i'm like it's so hard to maintain there's a lot of collab managers already for us if you see the organization chart here as i said it's not probably finalized completely but it's really uh you know at this stage for us getting collabs is not that um you know hard in that sense um uh, because like you know we have a um, oh for other projects mm, i'm 100% 
oh, maybe offering their services to it's almost like what Web3, uh, what is it, Bridge3, right? I think Bridge3, that's what they're doing. Um, this guy's, I think, Bridge3, right? So Launchpad is having that, yes. Um, Launchpad is having that service. We <laughs> pretty much help all the Launchpad projects and the consulting projects with that. That's our value proposition, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> essentially, right? So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, I think at this stage, probably not, uh, because it's almost like kind of like what Bridge 3 does. And it's uh, now maybe when the meta starts, maybe when the whitelist meta and stuff starts. So, you know, if that doesn't start, maybe till then, you know, we gotta be in uh, this thing. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, I mean, like we just, I mean, I'm already, as I said, right, we are already kind of, it's really tiring with the collapse and stuff. People are getting wo overworked and all those things. It's a big process, um, you know, and um, at this stage when there's not too many collabs, it's kind of like, you know, draining both uh, in terms of dollar value for the vault and also like, you know, uh, work that's involved. Yeah, so that's the thing, like, you know, this uh, whitelist thing till the, you know, the bull kind of starts hitting. Uh, it's it's pretty <clears throat> pretty much like you know yeah we don't want to increase too much. Um, yeah, pretty much this. What you're suggesting is what Bridge Three does. I don't know if you know about this thing called Bridge Three. They charge a lot as well and. Uh, uh, but at this stage, they're struggling. Uh, but <clears throat> this one, these guys. Um, Jimmy, uh, which was the team we were talking with recently? I forgot, like, with all the meetings. Someone was exactly offering this, right? The Bridge 3 service, and they want to want us to partner or something. Do you remember, like, uh, similar to... Yeah, yeah. It's a... Was it, like, share mint or something? No, no, it's an infinite studio. We're working on some kind of stuff. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I think we're also working, guys. Our dev team, with our dev team, we are working out a product, I think, like similar to what Adisa has suggested, I think. Uh, there's a few yeah. things going on. So Jamie is the CEO, right? So he's the one who's pretty much the one who would be you know, aware of all the products that's coming up um, as such. Um, so for me, it's all about, like, you know, bridging and collabing and, like, you know, meeting up with uh, new potential partners. So because I kind of, we uh, we offloaded and we, in the last few months, we are able to judge who's better at what kind of thing. So we kind of now have a really solid understanding of what each team member could do. And Jamie was like, you know, amazing at what he was doing with, you know, kind of like keeping track of all the products. Because I get on the meeting, I see it's good and then, and then I pass it on and I forget what the meeting was about or stuff, right? So Jamie pretty much handles from there. So, uh... Yeah, this guy, I think Nikki G, right? Yeah, that, that's the one. So we have, uh, we have a, I think we are coming up with Bridge 3. And also we are coming up with another cool thing. Uh, uh, did we sign up the contract with uh, One Mint yet? No, no, not yet. Okay, all right. So I'll talk more about it, you know, when we, so once we sign the contract, but there's a really cool product um, that's coming up. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I think all the alpha callers and the degents probably want to love it in the sense like a reward system for a lot of them. So, um, you know, let's, <clears throat> we pretty much can see. We'll talk about it probably in the next town hall before, if we confirm or sign the deal before that. It's another equity, we are taking, we are looking to take an equity in another product. Um, so we'll let you probably know in the next week. Yeah, I could open up the doors to bring holders, Web2 jobs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, so I mean, like, that's... Once back, we had this major discussion about this uh, onboarding Web2 to Web3 through services and jobs and stuff. So, 
I don't want I'm, I'm as I said I don't I don't want to talk too much about things that are like in the a little bit away from the future maybe at this we are meeting up this week right I'm going to I'll show you the idea and plan what we're doing so you're coming to Melbourne that could be your IRL leak of benefit so I'll talk to you more about this thing which what we are doing and uh, you'll probably like what we're going to do based on your suggestion yeah so <clears throat> again like you know like talking about a product doesn't mean that it's coming out tomorrow right like we have to go in stage by stage like you know launching 10 projects in a month and then next month we i mean like after that we won't have anything or the quality will be shit so we have few pro- products in the in the pipeline but just got to make sure that which ones we prioritize so yeah yep we on the beers for sure and probably on friday i think if you are uh, here on friday probably we could meet on the friday evening can maybe pick, get some of the jira holders as well it's really it was really nice man and i, I really want to like a huge shout out to uh, i think um, bones he's been taking care of the jira fam like really you know like crazy like you know fucking like free drinks and shit for us and amazing food super vibe in this place so we pretty much have been going and to his place almost all the weekends i think g was there even today i think or till like 10 pm or something before the team meet um but gc is he still here or i think probably gc did <laughs> right so i think yeah sh- uh, i mean it's 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 kind of the sense of community uh, aspect is felt when you meet go to these like you know the holders like you know jo- uh, like you know restaurants or pubs or something right so it's probably um at these we might meet up again at bonses there's a there's a really nice uh triplex hot chicken wings it's at this burger place <laughs> so you know i think probably want to make you try it yeah, so anybody who's in melbourne and want to meet up on friday or something yeah obviously like feel free to join um i think adi i think thursday or friday adi is, is coming from perth i think i haven't met him before so uh definitely looking forward I probably don't be surprised after the meet uh, adi's adi might become a genesis holder i'm pretty sure <laughs> especially with uh, bones around it's going to be always like you know I, trust me bones is like the biggest advocate of uh, kajira that i've seen in real life like maverick is probably on twitter uh, <clears throat> and uh, bones is like in real life he literally almost convinced two people to buy genesis on the spot he made them open up their open sea and like you know go to uh, what is it uh, their meta mask and stuff and he was like i'll give you a free gen 2 if you buy a genesis right now and like you know free food for life and shit like that i mean this guy was legit like you know i was like <laughs> was one of the biggest ambassadors i've i've met in met in person so uh, anyways guys i think it's 2 hours and it's 1 am now so uh, probably catch you guys on the next town hall um yep all right catch you then um anything that you want to add amrish or pretty much we're done Ambrish or Jamie. Right, cool. I think it's done.